for. Um, Valerie and Ashley, who are here uh, this morning to give us uh, a few demonstrations uh, for this first session. The first session that I'm doing uh, uh, is on court today, so we will keep it very practical and we try to give some uh, demonstrations on what the female tennis journey is about. We'll take it as a normal session, so we'll start with a warm-up, with a little mini tennis exercise within the service box, all the way through a normal session where we will finish with some serves. I can talk five days about women's tennis <laughs> on the court, so we're now going to do it in 55 minutes. There's a bit of a challenge. Thank you, Dan. For, but we will try to squeeze it in. It's going to be a bit frustrating sometimes for Valerie and Ashley because it's going to be a start-stop session. But what I hope that you can take away from this session is just a few reminders of what is more applicable for women's tennis than for men's tennis. It doesn't mean that what we're going to do here is exclusively for girls. I'm just thinking that at various ages and stages of the development, you can do things differently for girls than for boys. This one is on court. The handout that you were given this morning is actually more for tomorrow. So please hold on to it, okay? What we will do today is not really referring to, there's a few slides at the back of the documentation where you will recognize a few exercises that we're doing. But I think it is as handy to just listen and watch today, take a few notes. You can always ask more questions uh, tomorrow when we have a bit more time when we're in the, uh, the lecture room. Okay, one of the things that I would like uh, Ashley and Valerie to do is we're going to uh, pretend as if you haven't warmed up yet. Uh, we're going to start in the service box uh, and we're going to play some uh, uh, mini tennis. I'm going to ask the girls to play over the two service boxes and they can only use the open track and face. Okay, so you can only play twice, both on the forehand and the backhand, and you're going to move each other around. And the coordination of an open racket face has been a challenge. Uh, Leo Alonso yesterday did a few very good drills on uh, volleys, how you can regress. I think when it's difficult, you have to go back sometimes in challenging players to do a certain task. Uh, if you see Boys doing this on a clay court, they are very often more comfortable in sliding and even going really wide. And of course, the court is still a bit uh, wet because we're early in the day. It's a bit easy when the court gets a bit dry. But this is a very good exercise, actually, for girls. Uh, Valerie, you can make you can make Ashley move as well. Eh? It looks like she doesn't have to move at all. <laughs> but what is very good here is that. By doing it this way, they learn how to gradually slide. Now, the number of good girls that I have seen that in these two service boxes are not able to slide. Uh, they are afraid of actually putting the weight from one foot onto, onto the other. The reason why that is, I don't really have an answer for it. It is just an observation. I think it might have to do that once you play on clay, and of course in Europe we play a lot more on clay courts than maybe here in the US. The clay courts are a little bit more demanding once you start sliding and rotating and you have to push off. Maybe it's a surface that lends itself a bit more for the men's game than for the women's game. What, you, what we do see is that on the men's side, at the professional level, you do have more specialists really for grass and really for clay. On the women's side, I think this is a little bit more even now, you see the good players on play also playing good on the hard court. So there is this specific item, whenever you've got a clay court around, let them do this exercise in the mini tennis format, in the service box, and even if it's the first time, just five centimeters of sliding into a shot will gradually get them into getting more comfortable on a clay court. So whenever you can slide, <coughs> slide in the warm-up when you have girls. Compare it a little bit, when you go skiing, that's also sliding and gliding, you're not going straight uh, off a black uh, slope. You're starting with the uh, blue and the red slope, and this is what they're doing here. Even if they don't have to slide, they can just play every shot and just get into sliding into the shot and keeping uh, the bounce. 
whilst we're at this and we're sliding and playing a, a bit of slice, uh, Paolo, you can go there with, uh, with Ashley maybe. Uh, they've played a, a bit of back end slice. Now the back end slice for me, uh, I don't know if you know this Portuguese person, Don Quixote. Uh, I don't know how you pronounce the name, Don Quixote or Don Quixote, you know. You know, we can, uh, we can have a lot of discussions about how important is a back end slice in the women's game. I think in the modern game, it goes so hard and so deep, these balls, that a back end slice is very difficult to integrate. But when you have to play it, you must be able to play the back end slice. I don't think it's used in the same way as in a man's game. But when you have to use it, you have to play the back end slice. But when you can, you should hit the ball, I think, in the women's game. So, even at a very young age, even much younger than, I mean, actually, you are uh, 15 and 17, at a very young age, we can teach kids how to use the slice, but use it in a situation where they are forced to use it. And now I'm talking about a wide ball that is low. That's a ball where you're really gonna have to slice. As soon as this is around hip height and you can get behind the ball, I think you should step in. So maybe something to remember, step in when you can, slice when you have to. And this is a good way in the mini tennis, we're still playing in the service box. You're both gonna play alternatively, one back and slice. You have to recover in front of each other, okay? So maybe uh, just take a quick uh, comb, Valerie, please, and put it uh, on the... Uh, on the service line, just a little bit further than the middle on the service line. A little bit more to the forehand side. There, about there. Okay, so girls, we're gonna play the back end slice and we're gonna see if you can actually get around the cone and I'm playing a back end volley. Okay, you're gonna play back end slice very soft and gentle, back end slice into my back end volley. Here you go. Uh, Valerie, you ready for the next one? Yeah, okay, here we go. Yeah, four, sorry, sorry, that's, that's not a good, good one. one. But they are forced to play a back and slice. I think this, these are the shots where we're really going to have the girls having to play a back and slice. Okay. If we uh, if we ask them to play a back and slice when they can actually hit hip height from the baseline, I think they should hit the ball. So even if we take this a little bit further, if you go on the baseline now, uh, actually, yeah, Valerie. If we want to practice a backhand slice, I'm just taking a little side tour here over the subject. That they should hit a backhand slice. It is more a shot like this, where I think we really can ask them to play a backhand slice. Yeah, Ashley? Uh, these are the type of feet. So if we, I was talking to Ivan yesterday about so many years ago when he was working here for Dennis, how important it was to feed the ball correct. I think those. I've done three feeds now. The first feed was too high. The second and the third feed were good balls to make players play a slice. I think it's very important in any drill that we do where we use a dead ball situation where we feed the ball, it is never a complete tactical situation. And therefore, the quality of our feeding, uh, one person can come here, by the way, it's the quality of our feeding that will determine how tactically good our dead ball drill will be. Okay, one exercise that I'd like to do, actually you can stay there. Right? We're going to warm up and uh, uh, I think consistency is a very important aspect uh, in the women's game and in the men's game. But in general, one exercise I like is I only give the players one ball to warm up. So girls, you've got one ball. Let's warm up, up and down the middle. Yeah. If you miss the ball, you will go and uh, run and get it. Yeah. 